Hey all, welcome to Parker's Race. On today's episode, I wanna talk all things phytoplankton. All right, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reefs. And this one should be quite a quick episode. I just wanna talk all things live phytoplankton, what it is, how you add it to your tank, how you store it, where to buy it, and then uh, obviously talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages, because I must admit, this is something that I notice a lot of reefers out there are not dosing, and personally, I think the upside to live phytoplankton is huge. It's super easy to add, super cheap to add. You can even make it yourself if you prefer, but um, I'm a lazy reefer. I like to just buy a couple of bottles from a local fish shop, but I guess we should dive into what live phytoplankton is. Now, phyto is, I'm gonna call it phyto for short. We're just gonna get past that now. Phyto is a microscopic marine algae and it's hugely abundant in our oceans. Doesn't necessarily mean it's hugely abundant in these closed glass walls in our living rooms. And um, I'm a big believer of trying to add as much of the varied ecosystem as possible into our little ecosystem in the living room, just to give it as much chance as possible as ongoing success. I find that the little creatures and critters and filter feeders and things in our tank, whilst they may do with some detritus and other bits and pieces there, adding some live phytoplankton in the tank is just gonna give them a better chance of success and hopefully a better chance for thriving over a long period of time in our tank. Now, phytoplankton itself requires inorganic nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphate, and sulfur, which it converts into proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Basically takes all of those things you don't want to build up in your aquarium, converts them into things that you do want to build up in your aquarium. As much of a win-win as possible as I can say. Phyto aids in the production of oxygen. In fact, Phyto is estimated to produce over 50% of the world's oxygen. A lot of people will think that trees on our planet are producing most of the oxygen when a lot of scientists out there believe that phytoplankton is actually doing more of the oxygen production than trees themselves. This little green liquid here really is the, uh, our savior on this planet and um, it probably deserves a little bit more recognition than it currently gets. As a result of producing that oxygen, it's also going to boost the pH in your tank because uh, for some reason of late, pH has been one parameter that everyone's chasing in their tank and um, having something that actually creates oxygen in your tank is gonna go a long, long way to making that pH level rise. So uh, when you're doing your uh, CO2 scrubbing meter or you're bringing a fresh air line in or you're doing cold coarser or whatever you may, even algae refugiums, don't forget Fido if you're chasing pH. This little piece could be the missing piece of the puzzle in your chase for pH perfection. Man, that's a lot of peas. There is good evidence to suggest that phyto is a good direct food source for corals. Now, even if you don't believe that corals directly will consume this, other parts in the uh, ecosystem, other key microfauna that do consume this, absolutely, there's no debate about it whatsoever, do get consumed by corals. So whether the phytoplankton itself is feeding your corals or it's feeding the things that your corals feed off, it still is a key part of the uh, food chain, I guess, to ensuring your corals are getting all of the nutrients they need to survive. Live phytoplankton, it will absorb nutrients. Think of it like a liquid algae refugium. It just does that in that it absorbs nutrients because that's what it does when it grows and thrives. All right, so hopefully now I've got you excited about the prospects and the uh, idea of live phytoplankton. And you're probably asking yourself, how do I dose it? When should I dose it? And things like that. Now, I can tell you that the uh, bottle here that I pick up from my local fish shop says that I should dose five mil per 50 liters. I tend to err on the side of caution a little bit more than that in my dream roof tank here because it is such a young system and I don't have huge coral colonies in there just yet. So I'm around the one mil to two mil per 50 liters, but I do that daily. That does mean I have to pick a couple of these bottles up each week, but sometimes I'm in luck and uh, the fine people at Coral Creatures produce me a bulk bottle, which does last me a few weeks. Now, I should point out when I dose this, I have it set to dose for over the first two hours that my lights turn on. And the reason why I do that is phytoplankton does its best work with light. So I don't wanna be dosing this at night. I want it to dose it as soon as the light comes on so it can thrive and expand and grow and multiply and do all the things it needs to do in the tank, right in the display while the lights are on. Now, obviously I don't have a dosing line going straight up into my display, but I do dose it directly into the return pump chamber to ensure that it gets straight into the display and is accessible by all those filter feeders and corals as soon as possible. 
Of course, if you don't have a doser, it is totally fine to manually tip this in each morning. I would do it in the morning just as you're heading out the door for work or just after breakfast, something like that, when your lights are about to come on. You can literally tip a fair amount of this into your display tank. If you have a doser, it's nice to spread that out over a couple of hours, say, but uh, there's minimal risk in adding a decent chunk of this in your display at one point in time. All right, I should talk about some of the potential risks because there is a small, small risk. Things could go south with live phytoplankton. Some of those downsides could be potential algae blooms if the tank has heavy nutrients, possible night and day pH swings, depending on uh, when you dose this and how, how much of an oxygen reaction the things there are, like a refugium. But likely the only noticeable effect is if your tank turns a bit green, if you get a bit of a bloom from the phyto and it takes over, all you have to do then is just ease up a little bit. If you already have dosed quite a bit in the tank and that bloom is starting to take over, you just simply need to bring your lighting back a little bit. That'll stop the phyto multiplying and then your uh, bloom will ease back considerably from there. That being said, I've been dosing phyto for quite a few years now and I haven't experienced this problem myself. All right, hopefully now you're at the stage where you're saying, where do I get live phytoplankton and how much does it cost? I pick these bottles up from my local fish shop. I normally pick up two bottles a fortnight, so one bottle a week does me. I dose it every second day, and uh, at 10 bucks a bottle, that gets me through, no worries at all. Of course, where possible, you can get some further savings if you can buy larger bottles. I do find the phytoplankton, it lasts a long time. If you keep it in the refrigerator, it is fine. Every time you open the refrigerator, give it a bit of a shake to make sure it's not settling on the bottom, and uh, it's gonna be a long economical purchase for you. Do you need to dose it all day, every day? Absolutely not. Do I recommend you add it in every now and then? Absolutely. It's the sort of thing that um, I'm at the stage where I'm trying to keep the uh, diversity in my system as high as possible. So I'm putting it in as often as I can, but realistically for the long-term success of this tank, I wanna make sure maybe one week out of the month, I'm dosing a bottle of uh, phytoplankton into my tank. I think I've covered everything I need to cover there, guys. If you do have any questions at all, be sure to pop it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It takes two seconds of your time, costs no money at all, and it'll go a long way to helping me out on this channel. Other than that, guys, I will leave it at that. Thank you so much. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.